In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the uh, the three normal measures of central tendency. And so first of all, the mean, or some people call it the arithmetic mean. Uh, it's the sum of the data points divided by the number of data points, how many numbers you have. And so, um, and there's two different formulas here. Um, they are only slightly different. Uh, so now there's a sample mean and a population mean. So population means you know everything. Uh, all of the numbers in the entire thing. And so the symbol for the population mean is the Greek letter mu. And so, and the number of numbers, the size of the population is capital N. So you add up all the numbers from the entire population divide by N, the size of the population. In the sample mean, it's a little X with a bar over top is the uh, symbol for the sample mean. And we're, we're taking a sample, so the little n here represents how many numbers in the sample. And it would be less than the capital N. So it would be some subset of it. So we add up all those numbers from x1 to the nth one and divide by n. Um, this is a shorthand version of this formula. It just stands for the sum of all the x's from 1 up to n, which is exactly what that says, and divided by n. So that's the mean or arithmetic mean. The median is the middle number when the data is ordered. And we normally write them from smallest to biggest, but you could write it biggest to smallest. The middle one's still going to be the same. And then the mode is the most frequently occurring number. Now they're called measures of central tendency because these three statistics give you an idea of what a normal number in this group of numbers would be. That's why they're called measures of central tendency. What's an, what's an average number like here? Now when I say the word average, I'm not referring to the mean specifically. Average here would mean what's a normal number in this group of numbers. So those are the three measures of central tendency we're going to take a look at. Now an outlier is a data point or points that differ considerably from the rest of the data. And I have a short example here before we get into some calculations. Let's say you're calculating the average scholarship amount for the graduating, for graduating students in your school. And let's say that one of the students recently from your school was awarded a special scholarship that was valued at $50,000. That's probably a lot more than the average student would get. Um, it would be a good idea to exclude that student's scholarship because it's such an extreme case. And a little bit more about outliers. Uh, if we flip over to the uh, next page here. And we're going to talk about skewness a little bit before we get into some actual calculations. Um, Data can be negatively skewed, which means there's some outlying values, which are a fair bit less than the rest of the numbers in the uh, lower direction. In the so that's called negatively skewed. Symmetrical means that it looks like this. So you may have some numbers that are a little bit further away from the middle numbers, but they're pretty, pretty equally distributed on the high side and the low side. And then there's positively skewed, which means there's more... Um, numbers that are larger than the middle numbers and they're on the positive side, they're above. Now the mean of, of those three statistics I talked about in the last page, the mean is the one that's most influenced by outliers because if you're adding a whole bunch of numbers up and dividing by the number of numbers, if you have one number that's a lot bigger or I guess a lot smaller, then it can affect that sum more so than affecting the median or the mode. So the the arithmetic mean is the one that's most influenced by outliers. So negatively skewed, what you will find is that the mean is the lowest of the three values, and then the mode is going to be more towards the middle and the median between them. If it's symmetrical, then the mode, the median, and the mean should be all the same. If it's positively skewed, again, uh, the positively skewed means there's uh, numbers up here that are outliers or somewhat larger than the rest of the numbers. And so that affects the mean in a positive way, positive mean in making it larger. And again, the mode would be more towards the middle and the median between them. So example number two, the ages of uh, 12 people in a choir given below. And you're asked to determine the mean, median, and mode. So 
notice that these numbers are not in a particular order. Now, for the purpose of calculating the median, they do need to be in an order. They don't really need to be for the mean. Uh, it can make finding the mode more easy if they are in order. So let's take these numbers and put them in order. So that's what it looks like when they're in order. So they start at the lowest is 12 and the highest is 44. So to calculate the mean, we add them all up. So 12 plus 17 plus 18 plus 19 plus 22, etc. Notice that there's two 26s. So in the middle here, you could go 26 plus 26 or 26 times 2. It doesn't really matter too much. And then 30, 35, and 44 are the last three numbers. There are 12 numbers here, so that's why we'd be dividing by 12. So we add all of this up, and you should get 297. So we'd be dividing 297 by 12. And so the, the mean number of years, or mean age, is 24.75 years. Now, to calculate the median, the middle number. So there's 12 people here. In order to find, if there's an even number of numbers, then there's two middle ones. And the way you get the what the two middle ones are is you take the 12 and divide it by 2 so we take the 12 and divide it by 2 to give you 6. So that means the 6th and the 7th numbers are the two middle ones. So if you count here, 1, 2, 3, that's why we need them in order, 4, 5, 6. These two are the middle numbers. So to get the median, we would be averaging those two. So we would add 23 and 25 and divide it by 2. 23 and 25 uh, adds to 48 divided by 2 is 24. So the median would be 24. Now the mode is the most frequently occurring number. Everything occurs once except the 26. 26 occurs twice. So that's why the mode would be 26. Now if every number occurs once, then we would say there is no mode. If you had two numbers that occurred the same amount of times more than once, so let's say there's 226, and let's say there was, let's say that 19 was an 18, there were two 18s, then there'd be two modes, 26 and 18. It'd be said to be bimodal. There's two modes. Example number three, a weighted mean. So sometimes you're given the weight or a percentage for uh, some certain categories. So let's say Evan on uh, his test, uh, let's say there's three, par uh, four different parts to the test. There's a knowledge and understanding part, there's an application part, a communications part, and a thinking inquiry category too. So let's say you get 25 out of 30 on the knowledge part, 19, uh, 9 out of 14 on the application part, 3 and a half out of 5 on the communication, and 4 to 6 on the thinking inquiry part of the test. So, and let's say that uh, for Evan's course, the knowledge and understanding is worth 35%, the application 30, the communication 20, and the thinking inquiry 15. So what I would do is I would take these marks, 25 divided by 30, and I would convert them to a percent. So 25 divided by 30 is 0.8. And in fact, these are the calculations. So 25 divided by 30 is 0.833, 83 repeating. So I'll round to three decimal places. 9 divided by 14 is 0.64. That would round to 3. So 64.3%. 3 and a half out of 5 is uh, 70%, so 0.7. And 4 to 6 is 0.6 repeating, so I'll round to 0.667. Now, what I'm going to do here is In, I'm going to calculate what's called a weighted mean. So these percentages are going to be weighted at 35%, 30%, 20%, 15%. .15. And there's actually two different ways to write this out. So I'm going to go 35 times 0 0.833 plus 30 times 0.643 plus 20 times 0.7 plus 15 times the 0.667. And if you calculate that out, this is what it looks like on my calculator, you get 72.45. Now, as I said, there's two different ways to do this. So I'm going to show you another way. And 
you see, you could actually think of this as 83.3 and it's weighted at 35%. So you could go 83.3 and like rate that one as percent and this one is a decimal times 0.35 plus. And this would be 64.3 times 0 0.30 plus. And this is 70%, so 70 times, and that would be 20% 20, uh, 20 is 0 0.20, plus, and then 66.7 times the, and that would be 15%, so 0.15. And notice you get exactly the same thing, 72.45%. So that's the weighted mean. So Evan's actual test mark would be, well, to the nearest percent, would be 72% 70, on this test. Now, the, the last example here, I'm going to show how to use uh, some technology. The two examples I'm going to use are how to use something called GeoGebra, and then the same graphing calculator I had on the page a moment ago. Now, so... Uh, GeoGebra looks like this. Now you can actually run this in a browser or you can download it to your computer. So you have a couple different options. So since it runs in a browser you can run it on anything that has internet access basically. So uh, now you could also, this is, I'm going to use this kind of like a spreadsheet, well like a spreadsheet kind of like Excel. So the first thing you have to do is go into view and you actually have a lot of different options here. I'm going to choose the spreadsheet option. And so in here, I'm going to type these numbers. Now the data number, uh, the first data point is 2, and then 4, 5, 7, 9, and 12. So 4, 5, 7, 9, and 12. Now the frequency is how many of each of these you have. So there's only 1, 2, there's 3, 4s, 4, 5s, four, 2 7s, 1 9, and 3 12s. Now, if you wanted to, you could type 2 and then you could go 4 4 4 instead of uh, using the frequency. And there's uh, 4 5s. So after that, you could go 5 5 5 and 5 for them. Uh, but if you have a lot of that repeated, it's a good idea to use this option. So, so now the um, the version running in the browser does work slightly different than this. I haven't been able to figure out, and I, if somebody is watching this YouTube video and has a solution for me, I'd love to hear the comment. I haven't been able to figure out how to do the frequency thing when it's running in the browser. So, um, so in that case, you could just type out all the numbers. Uh, you know, one, two, three, four, four, fives, etc. So highlight the data points. And this says one variable analysis, so I'm going to click on that. And so in here, in this little wheel, options, I want to go data with frequency. You don't get that option in the browser version, so there must be another way to do this. So data with frequency, and so this is where I'm going to highlight all my frequencies. And when I click on the hand, they're going to populate in here. So there's one, two, three, fours, four, fives, etc. And then you click on analyze. Now, this isn't actually sh just showing you a, a bar graph, but if you go into this symbol here, show statistics. So here's my 14 numbers. I know there's 14 numbers because if you add these up, there's one, two, three, fours, four, fives, etc. See, that's one and three is four, four more makes eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay, so there's 14 numbers. The mean is 6.6429. Um, we'll get it. We're not going to talk about standard deviations at all, but that's that's what those are. The um, the median there's the median's five. This doesn't give you the mode. Um, in order to get the mode, then well, look, there's four or five, so the mode's five. Uh, remember, the mode is the most frequently occurring number. So that's how you can use. Um, GeoGebra to calculate those statistics. There are other options here too if you want to see just a histogram of uh, this data. And this actually changes the number of bins. So notice there's five, there's six bins. Okay, so you can actually alter that a bit. So that's some of the options that you have. If you're, uh, this lesson isn't about uh, box and whisker plots, but you actually have that option that you can do as well, box plot. So let's close this down.
So this is the same thing I had up just a moment ago. And uh, so the n equals 14 tells you there's 14 numbers. There's the mean 6.6429. And the 5 would be the median. And of course, the mode is the most frequently occurring number, so the mode is 5. Now, the other thing I want to show is how you do the same thing with the graphing calculator, the TI series of graphing calculators. So if you go into Stat, and you want to go into Edit, so we hit Enter there. And if you have numbers in here already, which would often be the case, go up to the top, Don't Delete. You get a Clear. So hit Clear, hit Enter, and it clears the entire list. If you delete, you actually delete the list, and then you have to put the list back in. So uh, here's where I want to type in, in list one, two, four, five, seven, nine, twelve. So two, four, two, four, five, seven, nine, twelve. And over here, I'm going to put the frequencies. Now, once again, you don't have to use the frequencies. If you wanted to, to type in a single two and then four, 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 because there's three fours, and then five, 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 because there's four of them, you could, and that would work just fine. So. Uh, but I'm going to use the frequencies because I've got some repetitions here. And let's just have a look, make sure those are all right. Yes, they are. Okay, so there's my data. And of course, the two lists have to be the same length. If they aren't, you'll get an error message. So back into stat, and I want to go over to calculate. Oh, that is not what I want to do. Stat over to calculate. And I want one variable statistics. So I hit enter here. Now, it defaults to list number one. So you don't have to type in list number one. So I went second and see the list one here. So if you didn't have any frequencies, you actually just hit one variable stats and it would do it. Okay. I'm using frequencies, so I have to go comma and tell it to look in list two for the frequencies and hit enter. So there's my same 6.6429 okay, uh, mean. And there's an error here. Now, n equals 14, so there's 14 numbers. So if I scroll down, I'll get to see uh, these other statistics here. The median is 5, and uh, the minimum number is 2, like here. The maximum number is 12, etc. So that's how you can use the uh, TI-83 and the whole family, I believe they work the same way, uh, graphic calculators to uh, find uh, uh, mean and median. And that's the end of the video.